heard about the old farmer who was looking to buy some health insurance and uh, the health insurance agent was asking him some questions and he said, uh, asked him, have you had any accidents over the last year? The old farmer said, no. He said, but I was bit by a rattlesnake. And, and they said, and then, and then the, there was that time that my mule Bessie kicked me in the head. And the insurance agent said, weren't those accidents? The farmer said, no, they did it on purpose. <laughs> well, we've been looking here from Luke chapter 11 at what's often referred to as the Lord's Prayer, although we said it's not really the Lord's Prayer. This is not a prayer the Lord needed for himself to pray. Uh, but he's praying this. He's given this for, to his disciples as an example of their prayer life. And we said there's some key things here, and it's not the, the it's not some kind of magical formula here that he prayed that if we pray that magical things will happen and things will fall from heaven. But there is a pattern here, I believe, that we see that we would, I think, do well to, to pay attention to and, and put into practice in our own prayer line. And so we said there's different aspects, and the first focus that he gives that we've been looking at is that of worship, uh, of worship. Jesus said, when you pray, uh, say, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. We said the first thing that Jesus said they ought to pray for if they wanted to have a vibrant prayer life was number one, to pray for that God's name would remain holy, that his name would remain holy, God's sovereign person. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed or holy be thy name. The second thing we said then last time was to acknowledge God's sovereign plan. When Jesus said, he continued, he said, thy kingdom come. To understand that, that one day that God's kingdom will be complete. That yes, Jesus is going to the Jews. We're looking forward to that earthly kingdom. But one day uh, Jesus will come to rule and reign. And, uh, and of his reign, of his kingdom, the Bible says there'll be no end. But then the third aspect here of this matter of worship, the first aspect of prayer. But the third point is to acknowledge God's sovereign power, his sovereign person. Uh, his sovereign plan, but his sovereign power. When Jesus then goes on, he says, uh, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done as in heaven, so in earth. Thy will be done. That's the phrase I want to focus on for just a moment today. You know, God's will is, is going to be accomplished. No ifs, ands, or buts. Uh, I mean, that's what sovereignty means, that he has the power and the authority and the ability to do whatsoever he pleases. And there's a couple aspects here. Number one, uh, his will in all the earth. You know, God uh, will accomplish his perfect will in the earth. He will one day, finally and forever, uh, release this earth from the curse of sin and death. Uh, he'll purge it uh, with, by fire and create new heavens and new earth. It'll have no trace of sin in it or on it forever and ever. Scripture tells us in Romans chapter 8, as a matter of fact, that all of creation groans and is awaiting the day of final redemption. The earth groans, the animal kingdom groans, man groans, waiting for that day. In Romans chapter 8, in verse uh, uh, 19, he says, the, the earnest expectation of the creature waits for the manifestation of, of the sons of God. Verse 21, because the creature itself shall be delivered from the bondage and of corruption and the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation, all of creation, groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption, that is, the, the, the redemption of our body. We're waiting for that day to be released from the curse of sin and death. And one day, that will be the case for all of creation. He'll release it uh, from the curse of sin and death. But not only his will in the earth, but let's be a little more personal as we before we close today. Now that we need to be aware of his sovereign power in, in the earth, but in his will in the earth, but his will in our lives as well. You know, we ought to pray every day we ought to pray fervently and continually that God would have his perfect way, his perfect will in our lives. Paul wrote that God's working our lives uh, to will, that God is working to will and to do of his good pleasure. And we ought, to, uh, we ought to submit to that. You know, as believers, he's working to perfect us. He's working to conform us to the image of his son. Romans chapter 8, in fact, just a few verses later, he says uh, how that God, we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and them who are called according to his purpose. But the next verse tells us what his purpose is. 
For every single believer, every single child of God, it says he's working and he's determined, uh, he's predetermined, he's determined ahead of time that all of us would be conformed. He's talking about believers here now, but all of us, all who know God, who love God, who've been called according to his purpose, it says he's determined that we would be conformed to the image of his son. And so that's his purpose. He's working in our lives. And so we have two basic options, two basic options. We can become hardened and, and make it difficult, difficult on us, that is, not difficult on God. He's going to accomplish his purpose in the end. But we can make it difficult on, on us or we can make ourselves and our hearts pliable moldable. That's what he's doing. He's putting pressure in the right places and he's shaping and molding, conforming us in the image of his dear son, the image of our savior, Jesus Christ. One day that will be complete. But the question is, in the meantime, are we letting him work? Are we letting him fashion? Are we letting him mold our lives as he desires to mold us? God wants to use you. He wants to have his way and his will in your life. And so today that's my challenge to you as we focus on this prayer that that we would every day commit ourselves and pray ask God that we would be moldable usable for him that's what he wants to accomplish today in your life to make you more like Christ will you let him do that thank you for tuning in we'll be back next Thursday for another edition of ministry minutes